Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing even more interesting facts about the wizarding world of Harry Potter that some of the biggest fans of the series don't even know, at least not yet. Today's video is a part of a series, so if you have yet to watch part 1 of the 10 facts even the biggest Harry Potter fans don't know, then be sure to check it out after you watch this video. You can find it here. I decided to do a part 2 for this topic because, while you guys seemed to enjoy the last video, you all knew too much. Many of you claimed that you weren't surprised by several of the facts, so I made it my mission to dig a little deeper and find some truly surprising facts that I'm thinking many of you mega fans won't even know. Let's get started. Fact 1. The Golden Trio all had unconventional audition experiences. Of course, this particular fact is specifically about the Harry Potter films, and has absolutely nothing to do with the books. But it's a fact about the series nonetheless. Apparently, all three actors who portrayed the central characters in the movies, namely the characters of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, and Hermione Granger, had audition experiences that were not what you would call typical. The most, quote, normal experience was that of Rupert Grint, who earned the role of Ron Weasley. While he did audition for the role, he didn't just read lines from a scene in the movie, he rapped. At just 11 years old, he decided that spitting lines would be his best bet at getting the gig, and well, as it turned out, he was right. Emma Watson, on the other hand, was offered the role of Hermione Granger after the casting team visited her school's campus at the Dragon School in Oxford. As the story goes, apparently, Emma wasn't even keen to audition at first, but was persuaded to go give it a shot, and we all know how that worked out for her. Finally, Daniel Radcliffe, who famously played the part of Harry Potter, was actually discovered while attending, not performing in a show at his local theatre. It was here that he had a chance encounter with the casting director of the first film. Fact 2. Wizarding Botany is based on real herbs. Any fan of Harry Potter knows that many of the names in the series are based on historical and mythological references, with some being more obvious than others. But did you know that many of the magical plants that are referenced in the books and films got their names from real plants and herbs? Evidently, much of the magical vegetation mentioned in the series was sourced from a famous 17th century book on botany called Culpeeper's Complete Herbal, which was written in the 1600s by a renowned English botanist, Nicholas Culpeeper. A few plants of note that were sourced from this book are toad flax, fleawort, goutwort, grommel, knotgrass, and mugwort, which were supposedly all chosen due to the fact that they sound witchy. Fact 3. The actress who played Moaning Myrtle was almost 40. Born in 1965, the actress Shirley Henderson, who played the ghost of Moaning Myrtle in the film franchise, was actually 37 years old when she portrayed the 14-year-old apparition. This means she was 23 years older than the part she was playing. Apparently, Shirley is the oldest actress to have portrayed a Hogwarts student throughout the entire series. Fact 4. The houses of Hogwarts were initially noted down on a sick bag. It's said that J.K. Rowling initially wrote down the names of the now famous Hogwarts houses on an airplane sick bag. Presumably, she would have been traveling by plane at the time, but who knows, really? In any case, the names of Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw all came to her in a moment when all she had to get her thoughts down was a paper bag meant for bath. Fact 5. The Golden Trio were doing real schoolwork in the movies. Apparently, after being cast as Harry, Ron, and Hermione, Young Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint, who were all school age throughout the majority of the films, took the opportunity to complete their real homework in scenes where they were meant to be learning or studying. Presumably, having their actual schoolwork in front of them while filming enabled them to complete some of the work between takes. How very enterprising of them. Fact 6. Hedwig was actually played by seven owls. The beautiful snowy owl seen throughout seven of the eight Harry Potter films was not played by one, but seven different owls. This is due to the fact that owls aren't the most suited for multiple takes, as they are said to tire easily. All seven owls that portrayed Hedwig were apparently from Massachusetts in the United States. Their names were Elmo, Bandit, Gizmo, Casper, Swoops, Oops, and Uh-Oh. Fact 7. Steven Spielberg was tapped to direct the first Harry Potter movie. Before director Chris Columbus got the gig to beat the helm of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the job was offered to the internationally famous Steven Spielberg. With credits that range from the Indiana Jones franchise to Schindler's List, 
Spielberg is a mighty force in the world of filmmaking, so who knows how the Harry Potter movies would have differed if he had been the one directing them. Although there are some pretty weird rumours out there about why he inevitably wasn't the right fit for the project, like that he wanted to make the whole thing a cartoon, he has shared that he ultimately decided not to work on the Harry Potter films because he wanted to be home to spend time with his young family. Fact 8. Number 4 Privet Drive was a recreation of J.K. Rowling's old home. According to WizardingWorld.com, the author accidentally based the Dursley's home at Number 4 Privet Drive on her childhood house. On the website, she shares the following. Although I describe the Dursley's house as big and square, as befitted Uncle Vernon's status as a company director, whenever I wrote about it, I was unconsciously visualizing the second house I lived in as a child, which on the contrary was a rather small three-bedroomed house in the suburb of Winterbourne near Bristol. I first became conscious of this when I entered the number four private drive that had been built at Leavesden Studios, and found myself in an exact replica of my old house, down to the position of the cupboard under the stairs and the precise location of each room. As I had never described my old home to the set designer, director, or producer, this was yet another of the unsettling experiences that filming the Potter books has brought me. Fact 9. The film Swamping Willow destroyed 14 of Ford Anglias. It's been reported that during the filming of the Chamber of Secrets, 14 vehicles were wrecked during the scene in which Harry and Ron crash Arthur Weasley's flying car into the Whomping Willow. And that's not all. In an interesting twist, there's also a rumour that one of the Ford Anglias that made it through filming this scene was later stolen off the set. Fact 10. Dumbledore's name has a double meaning. While you may have heard that the word Dumbledore is an old English term for bumblebee, and that J.K. Rowling chose it as the moniker for Harry's mentor because she always envisioned him humming to himself, presumably as he buzzed about, did you also know that Dumbledore has also been known to refer to a type of beetle named the cockchafer? A particularly destructive species of beetle, I like to think that perhaps Dumbledore's dual meaning says something about the headmaster's character. Yes, he was brave and good and kept the garden alive, so to speak, but he also did some terrible things that set a fence in motion that destroyed many lives, such as his brothers, not to mention the whole raising Harry Potter up like a pig to slaughter thing. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.